We're going to need leaders who are strategic leaders, who are able to have a systemic vision of how to transform healthcare organizations from collections of craftsmen and bureaucracy into learning organizations which are focused on interacting and learning with the patients and cutting costs and all the things that are absolutely essential today for health care. We're also going to need leaders who are more uh, operational, who are, understand processes, are able to get people working together um, on a level of change in how uh, patients are brought in, what's the flow, what's the use of the operating room, all these things that are, very, when they add up, they add up to huge costs. And we're also going to need uh, leaders who are network leaders, leaders who can bring together uh, different groups across functions, nurses, physicians, administrators. And these may not have the same um, personalities. I mean, they, they, they need to understand each other, that they have to collaborate with each other, that uh, maybe the, um, the uh, strategic leaders are more red, they're more narcissistic visionaries, but they're not going to succeed unless they have the ability to work together with the greens and the blues and the hubs. And we're also seeing, by the way, that more and more of the young people coming in are inter interactive naturally, hub. You'll see more and more hub, hub, hub coming into these organizations who are naturally interactive. I've written a lot about strategic intelligence. You're going to have to have teams that share strategic intelligence. What does that include? It includes the ability have foresight to see what's happening. There are changes constantly, changes in regulation, changes in insurance, changes in new technology, new techniques, etc. You have to have people who are aware of that and able to uh, adjust to it, to learn from experience from the ground up, from people who are in the front lines. They're going to have to learn how to partner with each other. They're going to learn how to motivate. Motivation is still something that that is, is very poorly understood. People think you motivate with money. All, all studies show you motivate by what I call the four R's. Responsibilities, putting people in jobs where they connect with their values and competence, relationships, reasons, what's important, why are we doing this? People need to know that on every level. And finally, rewards and often the rewards of recognition and appreciation are much more motivating than money. Money, of course, can be d very demotivating if you don't feel you're paid fairly, but it's not what motivates. You can't change one piece without looking at the whole. And to look at the whole and understand the whole system, you're going to have to understand psychology, statistics, processes, and people.